How's it going, everyone? How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh Key. You know here, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting into uh, not episode. I was gonna say episode week five of the UBA regular season. Uh, today, we're gonna be taking on Carlos, aka Mr. Toast. Um, his link, of course, is gonna be down below alongside all the other coaches in the league. Um, and yeah, go subscribe to all of them. So, for those of you who might not know, Carlos and I do live together. So, with this battle, because we did it so late. Uh, in the night, we ended up battling in the, the my room together. Like we were just on opposite sides of my green screen, um, and so I didn't have any commentary. It was killing me. <laughs> it was killing me um, to not be able to say anything. But this is a post commentary. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys all the good stuff. So this is basically a match for first place. Um, if I win, I get first place. Carlos wins. He gets first place because I believe head to head is the first tiebreaker. If not, then I think I still have first place regardless. But um yeah so we're gonna see the teams right now well the team i brought palo fink life score diaga namorous alone nine tails and sneezler um trying some things out this week you guys will see a couple sets that might be interesting you might be raising your eyebrows questioning what's going on but i just wanted to try some things uh we have on the other end we have cracker wall puck yeah zamazenta comfe rotom heat and like rock dusk i believe no what's midday i forget what that one is um why it's not dusk dawn midday i think it was i, I just saw a video about that too i forgot the reason why but anyways uh off topic but yeah we're, we're trying some things obviously this is the first match this season i didn't bring grimstarl um and i promise i wasn't throwing the match i just wanted to experiment a little bit and have some fun with a different set like different team different sets um try out some different stuff but now i know future reference what's gonna work against carlos and what's not gonna work um so yeah i believe i lead off uh glide score here he leads no 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 what did i leave? Enamorous, that's that's the second option I had in my head. I lead Enamorous, he leads real time heat. So it's obvious Carlos is likely gonna click a, an electric type move here if he chooses to stay in. Not the worst idea in the world. So I was heavily debating like Anyways, I was heavily debating like the obvious choice is to go to Glide Square, but do I want to give Glide Square up that early was kind of my my conundrum. Ultimately with hindsight in mind, maybe I could have gone to someone else, but um, it's the obvious switch. It's the obvious switch for me. Go to Glass Square. I could have stayed in here. I could have terrored uh, and just gotten rid of the um, gotten rid of the uh, electric type weakness. But ultimately, I just decided let's just go for the switch. Make it you know not so complicated. Let's go to Glass Square. Uh, fully, I was still expecting discharge or thunderbolt or something. But uh, no, he chose a Thunder Wave, which still played in my favor. But now I know, like, he's got obviously. I mean, it makes sense. Most of times carry Thunder Wave or some kind of utility move like that, screens, whatever. But um, yeah, we make the easy switch. So, me, I was like half expecting him to stay in, to be honest. I was half expecting him to stay in. Um, there's reasons why I, I had it in mind, why I wanted him to stay in, or why he could have stayed in. Um, but ultimately I just decided to do, uh, the Stealth Rocks, Hindsight, should have maybe clicked Acrobatics here, uh, but, you know, I gotta get up my rocks, I gotta get my, my set going, especially for that Rotom Heat, because I knew it would be annoying, um, again, Hindsight, maybe I should have just pressed Acrobatics and try to take this, try to, t you know, predict the switch, maybe Zamazenta or Quackawall would have came in, I could have, you know, hit him really hard, even Palkia. Yeah. Ultimately, maybe, maybe, maybe would have made a difference. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I chose to go for the Stealth Rocks instead. But, again, maybe I could have gone for the Acrobatic. So, he goes ahead, uses, takes advantage, takes full advantage of the Triage. Um, that crit that definitely mattered. I didn't realize it was a crit at the time. I think I might have. I don't know. Um, but the Acrobatics did a lot of damage on the Confe. But I believe with this hit, he recovers enough health. Um... At this point, I, I was not thinking about switching. I was not. I was just kind of like, Glycer is going to die here. He's going to die. So basically, I'm trying to figure out, like, who am I going to go to after this? I'm taking the extra time to figure out, you know, what's my play after this? Um, and ultimately, this config is, <laughs> is annoying. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I, I, I knew I knew what my next play was going to be. Uh, 
pretty quickly after looking at the first time. It was easy to go to Dialga. Yes, I brought a physical Dialga. Like I said, I wanted to try some things out. <laughs> so I brought a physical Dialga. Phys uh, Dialga's physical attack is really not that bad to, to, you know, for me to not occasionally think about bringing a physical one. It's just like Zekrom and Restaurant. They both have, you know, questionable... Um, they both have good opposite attacks. Enough that you could possibly bring in a uh, physical or special depending on what you're choosing. But Dialga goes ahead and takes down the Comfe there. Um, I believe he goes to Zamazenta at this point. And this is where I could have definitely handled the match a little differently, I think. Um, I really do think I could have handled the match a little differently at this point. Um, without giving too much away for the ending. But it, it led to a much closer finish. <laughs> I will say that. Um... There's a reason I brought this Terra on Dialga, and I ultimately just didn't use it. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I didn't use it on Dialga, um, which was kind of dumb in hindsight. Like, I really should have just terra and tried to go from there, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, what do I, I believe I do switch here. It's like right here, maybe I could have terra an Iron Defense instead of switching... Um, or some, something along those lines, right? I could have done something something like that, but ultimately I, I uh, played a little cautious. Um, like right here, I, I probably, yeah, I probably could have gotten away with a Terra Iron Defense and, and done some work there, but I decided to go to Enamorous. I fully expected the close combat. I mean, that was, but knowing it was a close combat, right there, I should have Terra it. I should have Terra it. I should have just Terra it, click the Iron Defense. Uh, hindsight, maybe it's a hindsight play. Maybe I should have realized it in the moment. I don't know. Um, there's definitely another th right here. You, you guys will see that I, I completely forgot <laughs> that Zamazenta learns a certain move, <laughs> um, and it, it it bites me. It bites me the booty uh, <laughs> because Carlos goes ahead and hit, hits his Terra. He goes ahead and hits his Terra. Hits the Terra Steel. I completely forgot Iron Head was a move. <laughs> I forgot. I completely forgot Iron Head was a thing. Um, now I know. Like I know some things uh, of different ways I could have approached this. Mind you, this team, like I said, I just kind of. This was a first draft team. I put the team together and I was like, we're good to go. <laughs> um, so if I take the time to sit down and go over some things, um, maybe it'll turn out. Maybe it'll you know go a little differently. But the Zamazenta definitely became a problem once it teared. Um, and so at this point, I go ahead and send in Poseidon. Uh, I know I need uh, Hero Palafin at this point. I, I need it. So I just go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and sack off the Sneasler because I know Boreas still has its potential uses against, you know, just in general, <laughs> it has its potential uses against his team with the Aurora Veil and all the, all the other moves that it's got. So I can't give up Boreas just yet. I got to go ahead and give up the Sneasler. I didn't really want to. I didn't. I, it was it was a kind of a necessary sacrifice. I had to let it go. I had to I had to make some kind of play to get Palafin going. Otherwise, I would have never been able to get Palafin going. Um, and right there, I I, I misclicked the Dire Claw. I I kind of thought it was a misplay in the moment. Uh, in hindsight, I, I don't think it was. I don't think it would have mattered. I could have probably clicked anything, and I still well, spoiler, I die right here <laughs> by the Zamazenta because Sneezer's defenses aren't good. Um, so I, I was a little upset in the moment because I was like, man, what if I live a hit? I, I what if I, you know, manage to take a hit? Obviously, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to, but, uh, I was just a little upset in the moment. But hindsight, it's like, it really wouldn't have mattered. This Amazenta was going to kill me anyways. Um, so I go ahead and send in Palafin. And, um, maybe should have saw what Carlos does coming. <laughs> Maybe should have seen it coming, and I could have saved um, saved my Terra because, yeah, I go ahead and, and Terra Palafin into Poison. Um, maybe, like I said, maybe could have gotten away with not tearing here, and just going ahead and getting a fat hit off. Maybe I should have seen the switch coming. To be honest, um, that is the most. Yeah, there's definitely a couple plays I made where I, I it's maybe it's more of a hindsight thing where like I just. I just didn't, you know, think about it too much and just kind of did without when I should have thought about it more. <laughs> but yeah, he sends out a Quack Bomb, which it's still not going to like a Drain Punch. It's just unfortunate that I had to burn my Terra. But I didn't have to, but I did burn my Terra. Especially knowing now that he sent out Quack Bomb. 
Um, because then I'd resist the Aqua Step. The close combat would still be a problem, but... Um, I don't know if it would have made a huge difference, ultimately. If... if I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I save the Terra. Maybe I, if I can get Dialga to Terra, um, I can, you know, get away with a couple of things. Maybe if I had just Terra Dialga in the first place, different story. But, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. Um... <clears throat> So I believe right here, I was questioning whether Jet Punch would kill or not, and it doesn't. Um, a little annoying. I know it was resisted. I just wanted to take the chance because regardless, I'm taking that Aqua Step. If Acrobatics, I'm not going to outspeed Quackle Wall. I'm like 99% sure I wouldn't have outspeed Quackle Wall. So Acrobatics, I would have taken the Aqua Step one way or the other. So ultimately, I was just like, may as well just try the Jet Punch, see if it one shot, see if I can get a crit, which would have been really nice, but ultimately it did not. But we did manage to take out the Quackle Wall. Which is cool. Uh, I believe at this point he goes to Rotom Heat to try and Thunder Wave my uh, Palafin again. Um, but it's the, those Stealth Rocks actually did kind of come in clutch for the, the Rotom um, here. If yeah, there we go. So there's the Rotom. Uh, I want to say he he ends up clicking Thunder Wave here. I did watch his side of the match, but honestly, I, I watched it once and I just kind of forgot <laughs> what he was trying to do. I want to say he clicks Thunder Wave here though. Um, I want to say he clicks that, but we click Jet Punch, and it does kill. Takes out Rotom in one hit. So, annoying. An, an annoying Pokemon out the way. At this point, I was kind of expecting Lycanroc, because I would have expected him to try to save his Legends, try to do as much damage as possible um, while preserving his Legends' health. He he doesn't, though. And I believe he goes to Palkia here. He goes to Palkia, which also isn't a terrible, terrible play, because it is a quad-resistant Jet Punch. Oh, I was tripping, by the way, because it's floating. I don't know. I don't know what triggers it because th we had this. I think last season with Carlos's Zekrom, how it was sometimes be on the ground but sometimes it'd be floating. I don't know what triggers it. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, I go ahead and hit it with acrobatics. Hits us with an earth power, and we drop pretty quick. Um, so at this point, I do decide to send out Boreas. Uh, the freeze dry obviously is the play, but I also wanted to get up the Aurora Veil. Um, hindsight. I didn't go for the kill, if you guys can tell by the way I'm saying that. <laughs> um, I decided to set up the Aurora Veil instead, which I thought gave me a better chance. But again, if I had just held my Terra for Dialga, I think I would have had a better opportunity to uh, to do something with, with, this, with this little maneuver that I pull here. Um, so he pulled the Aurora Veil, hits us with a Thunderbolt. It does get the paralysis which is very frustrating because i know i outspeed this paul kid but now with the with the the paralysis it's it sucks um that was really frustrating really frustrating so it hits us with a surf and we go ahead and hit it with the freeze dry it would have been even worse if we got fully carried but paul kid gets taken out so he's gonna send in his zombies and so which is obviously i mean barring a somehow potential miss on a 100% accurate move, um, the Aurora Veil was not going to save us from the Iron Head. Maybe, maybe, hard, hard, maybe, if we didn't get paralyzed and we were able to take out the pocket with, with more health, um, the Aurora Veil might have been able to save us. Again, hard, maybe. <laughs> but he goes ahead and sends in the Zamazenta. I click Blizzard. Doesn't matter. It's going to outspeed us regardless. Hits us with the Iron Head. And we get taken out. It's fine. It is what it is. I needed more turns with the Dialga. Uh, anyways, so I was fine with, with uh, uh, Little Ninetales going down. Anyways, so right here, I ended up... So in the moment, you guys are going to see what move I click. In the moment, I thought it was a huge misplay, especially as the turn uh, the turn pans out. Um, but after doing some calculations, I'll explain it right now. After doing the calculations, it's actually wouldn't really have mattered, to be honest, one way or the other. So right here... I have a big choice. Do I click Body Press or do I click Iron Defense? Um, and I go ahead and click the Iron Defense, hoping that the, the Aurora Veil would do enough to keep me uh, high enough health. But no, alas, I take a lot of freaking damage. I go ahead and set up the Iron Defense. Uh, I thought maybe, maybe we'd be able to take one close combat, live on like two. But no, we end up going down to the close combat, and we get six forward to lose our final match of the regular season. Um, so doing the calculations, the body press wouldn't have done anything regardless. <laughs> Even if my, because the way I had my Dialga built, it wasn't fully built into defense. It had some defense uh, built into it, but um, 
Yeah, ultimately, that would not matter. What I think did matter most is that we did not tear a Diago. We chose to tear a Palafin instead. Um, and yeah, it is, it is, it is what it is. Uh, so we'll be heading into the playoffs. I, I believe we're going to be playing... Um, I believe we're going to be playing... Jakey again either jakey or max we're playing one of those two again so we'll see when the standings come out but yeah so that is it is what it is we move on to the playoffs though regardless in second place but that's me for this one thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed the video please share leave a like and subscribe let the people know how long it was right at see you guys in the next one bye